first thing to do is to unpack all the components in the box. The first thing, thing you have is your assembly instructions, a user guide, the safety tongue guards, the grinder itself, and the adapter table plate. We'll first take the adapter table plate and mount it to the grinder. This is used to cover the hole in the grinder table where the stone sits to keep the blade from falling in that during operation. The tongue guards are placed underneath the upper guard, one on each side to contain any sparks or breakage of stone if that would happen. It wants to be adjusted up to about an eighth of an inch of the stone on each side. Next we'll take the large T guards. These will go on the bottom side and cover the hole in the table. Again these will be adjusted up as we move the stone up and down to give us about an eighth of an inch between the stone and the tongue guard. This shows all the guards in place. Again, the table plate sits on either the left or right side, depending on which type of blade you're sharpening. Use the uh, thumb nuts and washers to attach it to the frame of the grinder. On the 8823, you'll notice that there are no nuts on the back side. They are only on the front side. The other models will use attaching nuts on the front and back. Again, the table plate is adjustable forward and backwards to maintain the correct distance to the stone. This gives you a good, flat, complete working surface for the blade grinding. The first thing we'll do is check the angle of the stone to the blade. All of the blades sharpen at 30 degrees. If necessary, we would adjust the stone and motor up or down by loosening the two nuts on either side of the switch and then turning the handle or the nut on the larger models to raise or lower the stone and motor as indicated by the arrows. Once we've maintained the correct angle, we would need to tighten both the nuts down again readjust our table plate and tongue guards to make sure everything is within an eighth of an inch of the stone. Then we would need to place the safety interlock tab back in the switch. This one removed keeps the switch from being operated and turned on by an authorized gears. We would check the forward reverse switch, making sure it was in the forward position. If we're doing a right-handed cut blade, in the reverse position. Never move the forward reverse switch while the grinder is operating. Turn the light on. <clears throat> Adjust it for correct viewing. If you have one, you would want to at this time mount your grit collector to the opposite side of where you'll be grinding the blade. This will collect the grit coming from the stone in the blade and keep your work area clean and safe. This is an optional ad addition to the grinder. It can be moved from the left to the right depending again on if you're sharpening a left or right handed cut blade. 
Be sure to use approved safety eyewear. Uh, ear protection. And because we're dealing with sparks and sharp objects, uh, gloves are also recommended. Once everything is in place, you have your safety equipment on, your work area is clear, we'll turn the grinder on, let the stone come to speed. Always stay to the front of the grinder, not beside it in case of any damage to the stone. Now we'll lay the blade flat on the table and simply move it back and forth across the face of the stone to remove metal and bring our cutting edge back to a sharp 30 degrees. Once one edge is sharp, we'll of course reverse and sharpen the opposite end. Always sharpen only the top of the blade, never sharpen the back side of the blade. Once the blade is sharp, turn the grinder off, let all motion come to a stop. Then we'll go to our blade balancer and check the blade for balance. If one end is heavy, as you can see here, we will then remove more material from the end that shows to be heavy. Again, only from the cutting edge, not from the back side or the